Hey there, YouTube friends. Mass Bandit here. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I always do appreciate it. And look, we're back to more mapping. More mapping. And I'm really excited that a bunch of you uh, seem to enjoy this. Thought it was something worthwhile seeing again. I did fiddle a bit with the contrast. Hopefully uh, you will notice a bit of a difference. It'll be a little bit easier to see the pencil marks today. Uh, once we put them to the marker, to the pen though, it's, it's much easier. So uh, what we're gonna do today is, um, well, we're gonna start by putting in our water bits and you're gonna see it's gonna take a while. So it's gonna be an early time-lapse portion. And then, um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start over here, is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add just a little bit you can see just a little bit of wavy lines here. And I'm gonna do it all down the coast, anywhere that there's spots. We're gonna add these little lines. If I, pardon me as I get away from my mic, if I grab my first map that I did and I show you guys, this was the first map that I did. You can see over here what, what was going on with it. All these little lines all the way around to signify the water. We're gonna do that. So that's where we're headed right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw it into time lapse and I'm gonna get cracking on that. So here we go.
All right, so there you go. We got that bit done, and man, was that that's some tedious work there. Those itty bitty lines. My hand actually hurts a little bit, but uh, it's all right. Power through. But I think I really like the way that looks. I've seen other people do like waves where you like you kind of do like little swoopies around the corners and stuff, which is a nice another nice technique. I prefer these little lines, and actually this map uh, I did a much more like wavy than the first one the first time. And so if I uh, take out my old map and try and compare the two, you'll see here that on the original one the lines are much straighter and they went away further than that one. But this one, they're much closer, much more wavy, and I think I like it better, actually. The uh, next step from here is to start sh uh, doing some mountains, outlining and shading. We're going to start at that mountain range right there, and we're going to see what happens. So I'm going to grab myself my pen, and we're going to start, well, we'll start up here. And I will just, you know, just going to kind of out follow my shape, but I am going to make these a little more craggy than the um, original one. And I'm going to trace in that ridge line uh, and then just work my way down. Um, and so just if I make them a little bit rougher, that gives me a little more opportunity for interesting shading and interesting shape, which I think at the end will make them look a whole lot better. And actually, now that I'm looking at it, I'm gonna jump down here. We're gonna do some down here. So <clears throat> here we are again, just outlining. And actually, um, that's really all there is to it. Once we're done outlining, we're gonna jump into some shading, but let's go into time-lapse and finish this up. So now that we have that part done, I'm going to go ahead and come on in with my smallest pen. It's a .005. It's really itty bitty. There it is. Ta-da! Very small. And we're going to shade the one side of the mountains. What we're going to do is, oops, as I move the damn map, <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're just going to add some little hatch marks to the one side of that ridge line. I'm going to do it all on the right side. It is important that you stay on uh, one side of those ridge lines so that it's uniform and it creates that nice little 3D look. So it's, uh, again, straightforward. And then what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to add little lines on some of these peaks to kind of make it look like they stretch out a little bit further, kind of make them feel like a, a bigger, um, more established mountain range. But like I said, just little cross hatches here um, all up and down this mountain range. And we'll do the both mountain ranges, and we'll have some beautifully uh, shaded mountains. <laughs> Let's get into it.
So unfortunately at this time, uh, here's a little peek behind the curtain for you. I've had to redo the audio for just about this entire video because again, I bumped my mic. I'm not used to having to draw and move around with <laughs> the mic in front of me. And for whatever reason, every time I bump my mic, I get some, uh, some weird thing where I sound like Darth Vader and it's off-putting and I would never have it in the video if I could control it. And since I can control it, I decided to redo the audio. That means for this last chunk, it's fairly long. It was a about a 10 minute chunk. So we're gonna speed time through it and I'm just gonna talk over it. So you'll notice I'm back to the pencil and what I'm doing is I'm adding some lakes. Um, found a couple spots where I think some lakes would work. Might have to find some other lakes. I, 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 want, I think we could have lakes farther away from mountainous regions. I mean, that happens. They would probably have to be connected to, um, well, they don't need to necessarily be connected to rivers. I'm trying to think, like, Great Lakes are, you know, glacial, I don't know. But anyway, we take the pen and we outline the river. And you'll notice I kind of doubled over on the largest part of the river. I like that effect. I think it makes it feel much more substantial and like it actually is bigger than the little uh, rivers that feed into it, which I really enjoy. And what I end up doing here is uh, I like to think of it as the main river system and do that one first and then build the tributaries off of that and just start with the biggest uh, section and then slowly um, work my way to the tinier sections. So as soon as you put those rivers in, it really does break up the area. Someone in the comments of the video mentioned that they wanted to see... Um, uh, some inland cities. I totally agree with that. I think once we get our forests in, which is what we're working on right here, just sort of generally placing where we want the forests, uh, we can put in some more cities. Like I'm seeing to the right of that largest forest, I think would be a good place for a city. And I think somewhere way off the coast, um, in between the coast and the mountains, we can stick a few cities. I, I feel like we should be able to fit several more cities on this map. So uh, the last thing we're gonna work on is just a little hint of what we're gonna do with our forests. I'm gonna do this method where we make like little tree clouds, but clearly not clouds, much finer little humpty humps. <laughs> and then we add a couple more layers of detail inside the little bush. And then we add our little, there they are, our little trees our little trunks, and that's it. So that's about it for this episode. So with that being said, have yourself a great day, great night, great whatever, and I hope you come back for the next episode of Map Making. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Take care, everyone. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.